What is a HELOC and when should you use them and when should you not use them? And if you stick around to the end of the video, you're gonna understand why in my opinion, it almost never makes sense to use a HELOC to invest into more real estate. So to start, what is a HELOC? A HELOC is called a home equity line of credit. So it's when you tap in and pull funds out on the equity of your house. So for example, let's say that your personal house is worth $400,000 and you owe about $200,000 on the property currently. So you have 50% equity because you owe half of what the property is worth. So you can usually get a HELOC for 85 to 95% of the value of your home, depending on the bank that you go to. So let's use 90% for simple round numbers. So 90% of $400,000 is $360,000. So you owe 200. This means that you can pull out an additional $160,000 of cash off of your line of credit um, to use to go out there to invest. So literally you'll have an account with $160,000 in it, and you don't pay any interest when you aren't using the money, but when you draw on the money, then the interest starts clicking. HELOCs used to be a great decision because let's say you can borrow $100,000. You get a line of credit for 100 grand. You pull that out. The interest rate used to be, let's say 3%. So you borrow $100,000 and then you pay 3% in interest for the year. So you could take that 100 grand and you could easily lend that out to other people, real estate investors, at let's say 10%. So you can make $10,000 and then you pay $3,000 in interest. So you make $7,000 on money that you previously never had access to. Or you could take that same $100,000 and go out and buy more real estate that generates a profit of more than $3,000 because that's how much you would have to pay in interest to your bank. It used to be an amazing decision to borrow money against your HELOC. Now though, times are a little bit different. With the interest rates exponentially increasing, they're no longer those 3% interest rates. You're most likely gonna be paying eight, nine, 10% in interest against the HELOCs that you have. So if you borrow that money, the clock starts ticking at 10% interest, I meaning you have to go place that money to earn 10% or greater on that investment. So let's take a rental property, for example, and see how this would play out. So in this scenario, we're just gonna assume you draw $40,000 out. So you take out 40 grand and you buy a $200,000 rental property because you put a 20% down payment on the property. So that means you're gonna pay $4,000 per year in interest if you're paying a 10% interest rate, meaning at minimum, you have to profit $4,000 in cash flow just to cover your expenses. So here's how those numbers would shake out. You buy it for 200, you put $40,000 down. So you finance $160,000 at let's say an 8% interest rate, meaning that your principal and interest payment is gonna be $1,174 per month. Your taxes will probably be roughly $166 per month and your insurance is gonna be about $63 per month. So your total monthly expense just for your mortgage is gonna be $1,403 per month. Now let's say that the rent is $1,700 per month for that you know, three bedroom house, three bed, one bath, three bed, two bath house. So your monthly profit will be $293 per month in profit. That's $3,516 in profit for the year, assuming zero vacancies and zero repairs. So if you owe $4,000 in interest on the HELOC and you make $3,516 in profit, you only gotta pay $484 a year to own an asset that helps you build wealth. Might not be the end of the world, but like I said, don't make that mistake because that's how most people run their number. They leave out a whole other box of expenses that they don't even factor in. So the first question is, are you gonna manage that property yourself? The idea of investing in a real estate is for it to be passive to not have to manage it yourself. So you're gonna have to pay a property management company. Let's say you pay 8% per month for somebody to manage that property. 8% on $1,700 is $136 a month that you'll have to pay that property management company. So yearly, you're gonna owe about $1,632 to your management company. And then we also budget 8% in vacancies and 8% in repairs, which is another $1,632 each. So remember your total profit, of $3,516 per year, now put that up against your total expenses, $4,896. So you're actually losing $1,380 per year. Yes, you could go a year without vacancies. Yes, you could go a year without repairs. And yes, you could manage it yourself. So if you hit the lottery and have no issues whatsoever, you're still net negative. You're gonna lose $484 per year in a perfect world scenario. 
I think that we've lived through this life. We understand that we don't live in a perfect world. So borrowing your money on your HELOC, taking out that loan at eight, nine, 10% interest in today's market is extremely risky. If you don't have a place to place that money to earn a significant ROI, because remember, if you're only earning 10%, you're netting zero. You're taking on an exorbitant amount of risk to not even make a profit. You should at least be making 15, 20, 25, 30% on your money for it to even come close to making sense to be take on that risk of borrowing against your HELOC. Now, when interest rates come back down and you can borrow against your HELOC at two, three, four, five, six percent yes, I think it might be a great opportunity again to use that equity in your house to go out and make proper investments. The only way that I would borrow against my HELOC right now is if I have a guaranteed locked in ROI of let's say 15% interest. And for something to be guaranteed at 15% is extremely difficult to find. So even if people say, oh yeah, we guarantee it, how, how is it guaranteed? Who is it guaranteed by? Because the guarantee is only good as the person who guarantees it. So I can sit here and tell you, all these things are guaranteed, we're guaranteed to do X, Y, and Z. But if I don't live up to it, what's the guarantee worth? I'm the one fulfilling the guarantee. So even if you have people saying that they can do these crazy types of ROIs and guarantees on your investment, be wary. If anybody guarantees me a return on my investment, I get wary, I get nervous. Because investors know when they invest money, there's risk associated. So to guarantee something is extremely, extremely difficult. So you can say, hey, yes, our goal is to get this type of return, that makes sense. Our goal is to get that type of return. Uh, but personally, I'm not pulling out HELOCs on any of my assets right now uh, because of the insane interest rates going on in today's market. So comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. And if you want an alternative way to using a HELOC to invest into real estate, and you still want to invest into real estate with less risk, watch this next video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button so you can get more of this going forward.